Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to the 2023 Wildlife Safari Event Coach Training. Uh, my name is Melanie. I am an education specialist with the Detroit Zoological Society. Uh, this is my second year as an event supervisor for this event. Um, I had a great time last year with our Michigan bird season and look forward to another year with Science Olympiad. Uh, I grew up in Macomb and participated in Science Olympiad in elementary school. Um, I always had an interest in science and a love for animals. So I can say that Wildlife Safari and my coach back then um, definitely helped to grow my interest more and likely played a part in my decision to later go on and study biology and um, build my career in the science field as an informal educator. So I want to start by saying, first of all, thank you to all of you for coaching on co taking on coaching this event um, and supporting your teams of students. In today's session, we'll be going over the scope of the event, the rules, the format of the tournament, and um, sharing some tips and resources for you all before closing with an opportunity to ask any questions that you have that aren't answered during the slides. Um, as Stephen shared in the chat with you all, um, feel free to type questions into the chat as we go along, um, or you can hold off until the end and we'll open it up and you can raise hands and we'll call on you to unmute your mic and you can ask any clarification questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Wildlife Safari is a unique event in that the focus from year to year rotates through four different areas of wildlife, fish, reptiles and amphibians, birds, which was last year, and this year is our mammals year. So this year students are tested on their knowledge of Michigan mammals and their habitats through the use of a field guide, along with their understanding of basic ecological concepts such as food chains, food webs, um, and impacts humans have on the ecology of Michigan. Um, so this year's field guide is, again, by Stan Tequila, um, this Mammals of Michigan field guide, um, easy to find um, uh, online. And our rules. Um, so each uh, event has kind of a one pager that goes over briefly the rules of that event, um, the format of the test, um, and scoring. Um, this is a really good resource that I encourage all of you as coaches to um, refer back to several times throughout the season to make sure that you um, are on track and focused on the scope and how our event will um, run in the tournament. So on the Science Olympiad website, um, you'll want to check out the Wildlife Safari webpage. Um, each event has their own webpage to um, check out for resources, information, and things like that, such as this rules page. So um, when you get online, you'll hover over the elementary tab up toward the top and click on events. It'll take you over to an event listing page and over on the left side down toward the bottom is our wildlife safari event page. Once you click on that, it'll take you on to this main page here where you can find um, a PDF of that rule page. You can find um, an example uh, sample question that'll be posted as well as the recording of this session to refer back to as needed. So we are going to be kind of going through this page um, in a little bit more detail today. Um, as for questions, if you ever have questions, first of all, I would direct you to check out that web page for our event. Take a look through the FAQs, see if that question has already been asked. Um, these questions are in terms of the format or the scope of our event. They aren't anything too specific to the test of that year. Um, so they are all based on clarifying the rules of the tournament. If you don't see um, your question listed here, please feel free to um, click on the bottom there. It'll bring up a Google form where you can type in your question. It'll send them to myself as well as our tournament director and we'll get you an answer. And if applicable, um, it will be posted up uh, for everybody to see on the FAQ page um, for future use as well. So on to the tournament test format. All of the questions uh, for this event are based on information that's found in or derived from the information in that Mammals of Michigan field guide. This event is a station-based test. 
Um, so teams will have about one minute at each station to answer anywhere from three to five questions, and they will rotate through those stations um, during our session. Um, our sessions are 30 minutes, so it gets pretty tight. There's anywhere between maybe about eight, typically 80 to 100 questions um, between 20 to 24 stations. So it's very fast paced. Um, students will not be able to return back to any stations or advance further on to a next station until there is a call out. For the questions, uh, there will be multiple choice format or true and false. Um, they will vary in difficulty and based on that difficulty, um, points will be scored. Uh, students use custom zip grade forms. These are like Scantron forms where they'll bubble in um, a letter answer. And stations may include photographs, biofacts, which might be fur, skulls, track molds, scat replica. Having mammals this year gives uh, us a wider range um, of bi biofacts to use. Um, so like in this photo here, there might be anything like that to accompany um, the information that again is based on or derived from information in that field guide. Uh, students aren't allowed to touch any of the biofacts during the competition unless that station specifically notes so. Like for example, um, last year during birds, um, those biofacts are pretty fragile. Most of those were real. Um, so they're pretty delicate and we don't want students touching them or rearranging them that might mess up the format for the next group of students that's moving through from station to station. Um, if uh, that station is not one where they can touch it um, and they, something happens, this could result in a point deduction or a disqualification for that team. Um, and then this is a big one that comes up with this event. Um, scientific names will be included this year um, and maybe in up to about 20% of the test questions. As for scoring, um, I mentioned that there will be a range of difficulty in the questions. Um, points for correct answers are worth anywhere from one to four points. And in the event of a tied score, um, the tiebreaker will be based on the number of difficult questions answered correctly. Um, so no short answer um, or additional separate tiebreaker questions this year. Um, it's just based on the number of difficult questions answered correctly. So what should your students bring? They are responsible for pens and pencils for their event. Um, these zip grade forms don't necessarily have to be number two pencils. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that the bubbles are filled in. Teams can bring up to two field guides, um, one per student. These can be the Mammals of Michigan field guide, or they can be student created field guides. Um, if they choose to create a student uh, field guide, they do have to be bound or secured um, some way. There cannot be any loose pages. So a folder with pull out papers or things like that does not work. Um, it has to be contained um, as well as the Michigan uh, Mammals of Michigan guide. If students choose to add tabs into their field guides, right in their field guides, that is fine. Um, again, just can't be any loose papers. Um, field guides are checked um, when they enter the classroom prior to, as our session starts um, before they're sent to their starting station. Um, no other materials are allowed into the classroom, and this does include clipboards, so no clipboards allowed. What should my students know? Um, so these are kind of the general things that you can focus on as coaches um, to support them in learning the material and using their field guides. Um, they should be able to identify animals by photo, um, definitely photos, uh, utilize all of the photos that are packed into this field guide. Um, tracks, there's a lot of awesome information about animal tracks, mammal tracks in this field guide, um, as well as scat or poop. Um, students should be familiar with the field guide. So a big part of this event is learning how to use a field guide. Maybe they don't know every exact fact um, or even the exact identification for every single mammal in this book. Um, but if they know how to use the field guide, efficiently, it's a huge, huge help. 
Um, so there's some information and um, support in learning how to use that field guide in the introduction sections of this book. Um, taxonomy, uh, so classification by scientific order. This is how organisms are classified or grouped. Um, this is a part that's a little bit different from previous year of this event. Um, in particular, learning the order and family that these animal species are part of. Um, there's an awesome graphic toward the back uh, indexes of this book that separated out. Um, for example, a red fox is part of the carnivora order and in the candidate family, along with gray fox, coyotes, and gray wolves. Um, so this is kind of an extra piece of information that goes a little bit more uh, in depth than our birds did last year. So students should um, take a look at that information, understand it, and um, be able to locate it based on our questions. Um, mammal characteristics, as well as interesting facts. So these um, ID books, this study guide um, in particular, is packed with some really awesome information. It's separated out, um, such as the range map, um, different features of these mammals, um, breeding uh, information, key characteristics, um, when they're active, whether they're active during the day, during the night, dawn and dusk, um, certain behaviors that um, are more identifiable for certain animals than others um, and how they compare to other species. So this kind of uh, shows a little bit more uh, in depth about the taxonomy. So toward the back of the book, um, it separates out into these different types of animals. So I would encourage you all to take a look toward the back of the book at several of your sessions uh, with your students and teams. Some tips for you all um, is to, again, become familiar with the guide in the best way for each student. Um, all students learn differently. Um, get to know your students and uh, make it fun. Uh, some students are excellent at going through and reading it cover to cover. Other students might need to jump back and forth, um, focus more on identification practice as visual learners. Um, for uh, this especially, I would highly, highly encourage you all to use your resources and the opportunities. Um, there are several workshops for this uh, event um, throughout the community um, uh, at two of the metro parks, at Shadbush Nature Center and Shelby Township, um, as well as this year, uh, a session in the evening that's uh, at the Outdoor Adventure Center in Detroit. Um, these uh, interpreters and educators are super excited to host teams to help support them in learning how to use those field guides, practicing questions. Um, just be aware that because these are not led by myself um, and not uh, through Science Olympiad, they might be uh, not always be within the full scope of the competition. So it's just something to be aware of, but it's absolutely excellent, excellent practice to do so. Um, use your other resources. If you can't make any of these programs, see if you can uh, come up with a day with your team to head to one of your local nature centers, um, even walk along one of your trails or even just outside the school um, and practice using your guides. Um, based on what animal signs you find. Um, and then definitely practice with the zip grade forms uh, on our uh, Wildlife Safari event web page on the Science Olympiad website. There is an example zip grade form for this event. So I highly, highly encourage um, to get your students familiar with those zip grade forms. I had, there were a number of teams last year that struggled uh, with the forms. And if you're off by one or don't understand how to use it, um, it's a detriment to your score uh, at this event. So definitely practice, practice, practice with those forms. This is an example of what one of those zip grade forms looks like. Um, so the questions will have bubbles next to them. Uh, as students move through stations, um, those stations will be lettered and then the number of the questions will be next to them. So it's important that they can match up, know to match up what question they're answering. 
Um, this is also posted on our uh, web page. There's a link to access um, a PDF document that has our workshops as well as a few other uh, event workshops that um, outside organizations are hosting. Um, so this will be posted and again you can rewatch the recording to pull this information as well. Um, some of these programs uh, do have a fee or uh, admission price into either the park or the building. Um, so just take a look at that and you can call them for any more information on attending those sessions. Um, and a few other resources that I can share with you. Um, again, these aren't necessarily fully in the scope of our event, um, but they're definitely useful for practicing, um, especially in terms of identification, giving some other options for photos um, and kind of bringing together the information that they read in the field guides um, and putting them in a different perspective. Um, so Michigan DNR is an awesome uh, resource that's got a handful of the mammals that are in this book, um, as well as iNaturalist. It's kind of a fun way. I would suggest that using that maybe as a fun way um, for uh, getting students outside and practicing their identification skills. So we will go ahead and open it up for questions next. Um, Stephen, if you don't mind, um, I'll leave this slide up for just a moment. Um, if you don't mind reading any that are in the chat. Um, and again, these are on clarification of the tournament, the rules or the scope, um, and we will post them as well onto our FAQ page. I have a question from Brian. Uh, can students use the field guide and, and a self-created guide or one or the other? They are able to have one per student. So if you have a two student team, one student can bring their Mammals of Michigan field guide and the other can use, use and bring their student created field guide. Um, if you have a one student team, that student is just allowed one field guide. I have another question from Shelly. Uh, how many workshops do you suggest participating in? Are they standalone or overlapping? Um, that's a good question. Um, I know that they uh, would cover similar material. That being said, um, because they are different organizations, they are different interpreters that lead these programs, different educators. Um, from site to site, they might have different biofacts available um, for your students to take a look at um, and explore. Um, I would suggest trying to attend uh, at least one. Um, but it's up to you if you want to attend more and get more practice in. I have a question from Chris. Where can we pick up that field guide? Um, that field guide, I would suggest uh, searching on Amazon. Um, it, I'm not sure if it's in bookstores um, and physical copies in bookstores, but definitely online it's available. Uh, I have a question from Francie. You can go ahead and come off mute. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the workshops. Last year when I did birds, um, we went to Stony Creek and we went to Shade, Shade Bush, and they were two totally different. Stony Definitely. Creek was a lot like what we do for the competition where you rotate it around. Mm -hmm. Sagebush was really neat because he actually had them wear a bird tag and they actually got to do things. There was, they, he took like an owl um, uh, pellet and they had to open it up to see the, the, the bones inside. So Sagebush was much more hands-on and the kids really enjoyed it. It gave them a lot of background. He also spent a lot of time explaining the book. So um, I would suggest that you at least go to two. Um, I have been to the one, um, I, can't, I can't remember which one, but I've been to the one further away in Huron. But I don't do that because I live in Dryden, so I don't go that far. I, I let my kids know. If they want to go, they can go. They can arrange it with their parents. But I go to at least two. So you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, so that's that's my experience with the workshops. 
Awesome. Thanks for that suggestion. Um, I worked as an interpreter um, with the Metro Parks before come working at the zoo here. Um, and so even though the program, these programs specifically are for wildlife safari, um, and the descriptions may sound familiar, may sound similar. Um, these interpreters cr create these programs themselves, so everybody has their own kind of flavor to different programs. Um, so they may incorporate different activities, things like that. Um, another option would be take a look at again your local nature centers if they have any other programs that relate to relate to mammals. If it's like tracking or um, just like out on trail walks, um, they may share some cool information as well. Uh, I have another question from Paige. Uh, do you need to sign up for workshops or is it drop in? Yes, um, so check out um, the information that is um, on our web page, and if I I can probably pull it up here and drop it in the chat for you all. Um, all of these do require registration. Um, I mentioned that um, some of them have costs associated with attending the program per student. Um, some of them don't, but may need you may need to pay admission um, or have a park pass to get in to the park or the building. Um, so definitely. Uh, take a look on each site's website, um, take a look at that program, um, and you can always call them to ask more questions. Stephen, do we have any more questions? Not currently. Currently. Drop this all in the chat for you all. Um, so again, this page has some of the other um, event workshop, the workshops for other events listed on here as well. Um, so down on the fourth page, I believe, is our wildlife safari events here. Um, there's uh, links for most of them that will take you to registration pages. Um, but again, uh, definitely give those centers a call um, to register and get any more information that you'd like. We have a question from Chris. Is it safe to say that the test will be based off of the field guide, general knowledge of the mammals of Michigan, habitats, food chains, etc.? That is correct. And I see Katie from uh, the DNR down at uh, Outdoor Adventure Center uh, is on. Hi, Katie, um, and drop some information if anyone's attending, interested in attending uh, their workshop. All right, well, if there are not any more questions, again, you can go on to the um, event webpage and check through those FAQs. And if you don't see anything or come up with something later, you can fill out uh, the form to submit your questions. Um, again, I wanna say a huge, huge thank you to all of you um, for taking on coaching this event and supporting your students and best of luck to all of your teams this season.